I, I would like to tell you that I've ordered this beautiful <coughs> egg just for you so that you can be here. I'd like to tell you that uh, I'm the reason you're here. I'd like to tell you a lot of things, but the truth is, you come together for the right reason. That's to worship God and hear another portion of His Word. To partake of the table, to sing psalms and hymns to Him, and to go in fervent prayer with Him, and of course, eventually, to give back a small portion of what God's given us. Amen. It's a great thing to be among the family of God. I've chosen a sermon this morning and hope I can just do half as good as what the Bible teaches, the strength that it offers. I'll do my best. But you know, the chapter 9 of John offers many, 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 many lessons that we can learn. And we'll go through a few, but one thing I really like, what I've got here is a way that we can look at maybe three examples that are given in this story and see if we're one of those. I would say we very, very well may be one of those examples. So when I get there, look into your own hearts and apply it to your own lives. First of all, in chapter 9, 1 through 41, there was a son born blind. Can you imagine that? You know, anytime we're going to have a child, we pray with our hearts, everything we can. God, please make this baby whole. Make her healthy. Make him healthy in every way, Lord. We pray that so much. And little mamas, they're counting the toes and counting the fingers and feeling the little ears and they're checking out what God gave them, gave them and has been created in their own womb. And it is a precious thing. The love of a child. God has used and continues to use people with disabilities to do His will with men. Now that's not the only way, but He does that. You ever thought about it? This man had been born blind. Is that a sad story or what? I, I was asked uh, a few weeks ago, would you rather be born blind or lose blind, I mean, become blind in your, in your later years having experienced sight? I said, I wouldn't be, born, be born blind because when somebody said it was the sunset or the sunrise was red and yellow and I wouldn't know what they were talking about because I'd never seen those colors. This poor soul never saw the colors. This man had been born blind. Christ's disciples, the disciples of Christ themselves ask, Lord, who has sinned? This man or his family? What? Yeah, I mean, you know, which one which one has is is uh is sin? Now we can look at that and think, so what? Has anybody here, don't raise your hand, has anybody here ever heard I have? You know, I feel so sorry for so-and-so, but <laughs> evidently they earned it. They're getting punished for it. So maybe the parents sinned or maybe the child sinned and that's why I was born blind. Really? People still think if something happens bad to someone, it's because they deserve it. John 9, 3, Jesus said, <clears throat> Neither this man nor his parents sinned. Who said that? The Son of God. Oh. But that the works of God should be revealed in him. I'm going to discuss that in just a minute. Think about what I just said. Uh, that the works of God should be revealed in him. Oh. Now, being negative, you know, I'm looking for the negatives always, and I'm being facetious here because I do the opposite, I pray. But, yeah, you know, uh, God's at fault here. He had that kid born blind so he could show his power. Would anybody really think that? The book of Job completely refutes that idea, by the way. What did Job do wrong? Well, why did it happen? He had to have sinned. That's what his friends kept. What did you do? You had to have been sinned so much, it wouldn't happen to you. We know better than that. Acts, Luke, I mean Luke 13, 1 through 5. I'm summing this up for you because I've got to try to get through all this in a certain amount of time. But to sum it up, a sinner is a sinner. It don't matter uh, 
this one's worse or that one's worse or whatever. A sinner is a sinner and he's lost. She's lost. End of story. Period. No, it's not period. Yeah, period. Now, there's one way that they cannot be a sinner. They need to obey the plan of salvation to be baptized into the body of Christ and become a child of God. Or, if they're already a child of God, they need to repent and they'll be forgiven for their sins either way. Now, they're not a sinner. End of story. It has nothing to do with what you're going through on whether you sinned or not. I know some of the most wonderful people in the world that I wouldn't want to live the life they're living. Boy, their little plates are full. And they keep their faith. Wow, what an example. What a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful example of strength. John 5.45 says, So that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven, for He makes His Son rise on us. Well, He did, didn't He? The Son was here today for us as well as the sinners. Let's finish reading. Uh, so that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven, for He makes the sun rise on the evil and on the good. He sends the rain on the just. That's us. And the unjust. See, things happen in life. People get sick. People get hurt. Lives are destroyed. All kinds of things happen. And it's not because they've sinned. It's because there's a man called the devil that's working on you day and night. John 9 tells us of how Jesus used a disabled person to bring the glory to God. Now back to that negative thing. Yeah. Make that boy be born blind. So he... <clears throat> The man was not born blind so that God might be glorified. But God was glorified because of his blindness. He sees his blind from birth and what an opportunity what an opportunity to do what well i'm going to tell you right now i think that he probably wanted to let everybody know that he was the son of god now i think that because i know the scriptures hadn't been written yet of the new testament but let's look at john 39 listen to how it reflects on an understanding of what we're addressing now it says, And Jesus said, For judgment I have come into this world. I'm, I've come into this world, and I am your judge. By the way, none of you are my judge, and I am not your judge, and you're not each other's judge. We're not here to judge each other. Uh, For judgment I have come into, the world, into this world that those who do not see may see. At one time in my life, I didn't see. I wasn't ever blind physically, but I was blind to the truth. And that those who see may be blind. In other words, I don't need your help. I know it all. Nobody can teach me anything. I am self-righteous. We have to remember what miracles were for. Miracles for one were one reason and one reason only. Miracles are no more. The providence of God is, and boy, it's about as strong, but miracles were for one reason. John 20, 30 and 31. And truly Jesus did at many other signs than what we've seen in this book in the presence of His disciples which were not even written in the book. A whole lot more than what you read here. Yeah, but that didn't say what you said. I'm not through yet. But these are written, these miracles are recorded, that you may believe that Jesus is the Son of God, the Christ. And that believing you may have life in His name. You see, they had to go to great wonders, God, and Jesus, and Holy Spirit, to knock us hard-headed people in the head to get us to believe that was truly Jesus Christ. This is truly His Word, and we need to obey it. We're hard-headed people, aren't we? This miracle was for those that accept the teachings of Christ and are willing to see or believe as so many are blind to the Word of God then, today, and all in between. 
and the wonderful salvation offered by Christ Himself. Jesus is the light of the world, but He did not come to make men blind. He didn't come here to blind you physically. Uh, who before could see, but leaving them blind spiritually. If you, if you will not hear the words of this book and believe them and obey them, you're blind. You're blind as you can be. Blind as a bat. Spiritually. In this story, there are three very distinct reactions to Jesus. And that's what I want you to focus in on as I, I give you the rest of this sermon. Which one of those could I be? Or could I be a part of that or not? You read your heart. I'm not going to. I'm not going to try to. With which class do you identify yourself? The class represented by the Pharisees? Represented by the parents of the blind man? Or represented by the blind man himself? Now, they, the Pharisees, class 1... <coughs> saw and heard the testimony of the miracle in John 9, 6 and 7. They saw all this happen. They saw the boy given sight. Okay, the Pharisees. Let me explain a Pharisee to you a little bit more than he's just there, you see. He's a guy that knows it all. He's a guy that's a little bit better than you are. A whole lot more righteous than you are. You're nothing. I'm something. I'm special. You don't know nothing. In fact, I can see all those specks in your eyes. <laughs> I can see every speck you got in your eye. Hopefully I gave you a, a, a visual. Okay. When he had said, he, Jesus, had said these things, he spat on the ground. What? You know, spit on the ground and made clay with the saliva. What's he going to do with that? And he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. Would that not get your attention right now? It wouldn't mind. Oh, man. Now, would anybody here have a problem watching that and somebody say, he didn't really spit on the ground and put that in his eye? Yeah, he did. The worst sinner you've ever met in your life have been there. He'd have said, yeah, he did. I saw it. I believe it. I guarantee he did it. And he said to him, go wash in the pool of the Siloam. So he went and washed and came back seeing. Now, I don't believe that. <laughs> Do what? You believed he had the spit and the clay, but you don't believe he can see? Well, they refused to believe that Jesus was the from, from the Son of God. Saw a miracle in their own face. Now, before you get to judging these crazy people, with their own eyes, they saw a miracle in their own eyes right in front of them. They saw it and would still not believe that He's the Son of God. You've seen this right in your face and so many other people have too and will not believe it. <laughs> Is that something? Is that something? Their minds were closed and cast the man out of the synagogue and then accused Jesus of sin. I hope none of you are in this position, like the Pharisees, but that's what they did. Is that crazy? People. Aren't people amazing? How they can just, you know, the three monkeys, hear no evil, speak no evil, see no evil. I'm not going to listen. I'm just not going to listen. Therefore, some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God. You know what we're fixing to get into? You've heard me preach and teach on this so many times. I drove it to ground, but I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna just mention it one more time here, and we're gonna get into it. The speck in the eye. What I'm talking about there is trivial matters. Again, how many preachers are not preaching? Elders are not elder, and deacons are not deacon. Servants are not serving, and Christians are not coming to worship God. Why? Trivial matters. Somebody comes up with something, and buddy, they ain't back to go. They're going to slay your wet thing. Their minds were closed and cast the man out of the synagogue, accused Jesus of sins. Therefore, some of the Pharisees said, this man's not from God. Why? Because he didn't keep the Sabbath. Do 
do what? The Son of God didn't keep the Sabbath like it's taught in the Old Testament. And He was doing this miracle. So therefore, He can't be the Son of God. That's right. If I was that blind man, and you told me He was a sinner because He didn't keep the Sabbath and did this miracle on the Sabbath, I don't know that I know what to say to you. I don't know if I'd have the words. I might just say, excuse me, and go somewhere else. Others said, how can a man who's a sinner do such things? How do you know he's a sinner? Because he, he didn't keep the Sabbath. He, he worked on the Sabbath. He did it. It's sort of like getting the ox out of the ditch on the Sabbath. And there was a division among them. Why? Well, others said, how can a man who is a sinner do such signs? Meant they were looking at the positive. They saw this miracle, and if he was a sinner, he could not have done that. So there was a division among those people. I'm going to classify those people two ways in my mind. The people looking for the good and the people looking for the bad. The people looking for the fault in someone, the people looking for the good in someone. For the people looking at what's right in their face and reading it and accepting it, believing it, and obeying it, and those that don't. Do you or someone you know have a similar attitude? Think about it. Do you? How willing are you to weigh evidence contrary to an accepted belief? If someone can take this not this. This. And say, blah, blah, blah. Right here. How willing are you to weigh the evidence contrary to an accepted belief? Well, these people did more than just they saw the miracle. They saw the things that record here actually happen with their own eyes and still wouldn't believe. Are you willing to change beliefs if you are shown to be wrong? And that's not only in obedience to Christ. But that's in life itself. You know, you've, you've judged someone insufficient, terrible, awful, and I ain't changing my mind. Uh, even though now you've seen the truth, I don't care. I'm just, I don't accept it. Are you willing to change your beliefs if you're shown to be wrong by the Word of God, or would you rather pick and choose? what you want to believe and not believe. Think about that. Don't think about him or her or him or her. Think about him or her. Right here. Me. You. Think about yourself. 1 Timothy 6, 3-5 If anyone teaches otherwise, teaches what? And does not consent to the wholesome words. What wholesome words? Even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ and to the doctrine which accords with godliness. Right here it is. You teach anything else other than that, and I'm going to tell you he's talking to me right here because I'm teaching right now. And if you don't think that this don't make me feel awful humble and just a little fear, you're wrong. God help me. Bless me. Keep me from teaching anything untrue. I pray that with all my heart, and I pray that you'll pray that in my behalf. But if I do that, then I'm proud knowing nothing. But I'm obsessed with disputes and arguments over words. Yep. I'm proud. Uh, you're a Pharisee is your problem. From which come envy, strife, reviling, fussing, evil suspicions. I don't trust you. I don't trust nobody. Useless wranglings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth. Destitute. You don't know the truth. Woo! Who suppose that godliness is a means of gain. Why am I here? I'm not here to worship God and I know you are. You know every time I preach, somebody just walks out the door and says, you're talking to me, wait. No, I wasn't talking to nobody. I'm just talking. But if the shoe fits, I always wear it, please. I do. When I'm getting up these sermons sometimes, I have to put you on too. I don't like it. What I mean by a means of gain is not money, but a means of, 
I'm here and people look at me as a Christian. And the truth is, I know I'm not, you know, I'm not living right, but they do, so I feel good about it. From such, just withdraw yourself. Woo! That's tough. That was class one. And now we go to class two. The class represented by the parents. Let me describe that child again, and I can't speak for the child because I can't remember when I was a child, but I can sure remember being a parent because I still am one. This happened to my kid right here. I don't know that I could open my mouth and talk about it without crying. I mean, every time that somebody said, well, Joe Bow, here your son. He, he can see now. He can see kid. I mean, it would just, wouldn't you just be heart-stricken? Wouldn't you just be on your knees all the time saying, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you? You know, you couldn't help do that. Nine, eighteen through 23. Let's see how these parents reacted. I tell you what, you feel like they'll walk through walls. They'd fight Godzilla. They'd beat Tarzan up and throw him away. Nothing could stand between them and God Almighty out of thankfulness in their heart. But the Jews did not believe concerning what had just happened, that he had been blind and received sight, until they called the parents of him who had received his sight. Even though they knew the miracle happened, all these people tell them, some of them were even there, they saw it, still wouldn't believe it, it's got to be some kind of trick. Let's ask the parents. And they asked him, saying, Who uh, is this your son? Uh, who you say was born blind? I mean, is it or not? And, and how does he now see if all this is true? We, we wanted to ask you, because we know you'll tell us. His parents answered, Boy, here it comes. You know it's going to be great. He said to them, We know that it is our son. And that he was born blind. We do know that. Stamp of approval. But by what means he now sees, we don't know. Uh, or who opened his eyes, we don't know. Tell you what, he's of age. Won't you go ask him? He can speak for himself. If I was sitting there, I'd say, hey, wait a minute. What are you doing? This is your son. What are, you, what, what are you doing? Well, his parents said these things because they feared the Jews. For the Jews had agreed already that if anyone confessed that he was Christ, well, they'd put him out of the synagogue. Oh, well, I want to be, I want to be respected and revered among men as being such a great follower of God. I'll dump my own son in the grace. That's another way to say it. Go ask him. He's of age. They throw him out. Who cares? Therefore, his parents said, He's of age. Ask him. Good night. They wanted to be neutral in the matter. I'll tell you something about being neutral. There's been many military leaders in history say the same thing. You're either for me or with me, but you can't get in the middle, and that's where everybody wants to be. And if you don't believe that, They'll be all for you till the time gets bad. And then it's like, you turn around, where are they? They're gone. Where, where did my friends go? They wanted to be neutral instead of defending the truth. If someone asked you what this thing says, how do you handle it? Right before their eyes, the truth was there because... Of fear, they diverted the accusations toward their poor little baby that had been born blind all of his little life and now could see the colors of the sunrise and the sunset. What a beautiful, beautiful... My heart would be pounding out of my chest. But because of fear, they diverted the accusations toward their poor son that had spent his life blind and now could see. Does that make any sense? Is that not sad as it can be? Do we stand up for the Word of God or not? Whatever happened to Ephesians chapter 6? You know, 
talking about the soldier of Christ and putting on the whole armor of God? I can ask that question. Where have all the soldiers gone? You know what? Those precious men and women that have served in our military to protect us, to give us the freedom of doing what we're doing right now, I appreciate and I applaud from the bottom of my heart. And I don't blame them for wearing a hat or a coat or a vest or something. I'm a, I'm a soldier. I fought for this country. That's wonderful. How many soldiers do you see of Christ walking around saying, I'm a soldier too. I want to talk to you about your soul. Are you safe? I'd like to invite you to church. Well, that's not an M14. No, it's something a whole lot stronger. It's the sword of the Spirit that cuts you in half. They were afraid of the consequences of getting involved with the man that healed their little boy. You ever thought about that? Matthew 12, 30. He who is not with me is against me. Who said that? Jesus you can't get in the middle. You're either for him or against him. Do you stand strong as a soldier of Christ? Are you willing to lose a friend if you have to? And gain a soul? It's a hard, hard, heartfelt question. And it's a hard, hard, heartfelt strategy of life. It's called walking in the light. And he who does not gather with me scatters abroad. Don't bring them to me. Don't bring them to the truth. Mark 8.38 says, For whoever is ashamed of me, that's Jesus, and my words, again Jesus, in this adulterous, sinful generation, you know what, Lord, it hadn't changed a bit from then to now. Of him the Son of Man also will be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father and of the angels. A sidetrack just for a second. I can't imagine how I would feel if God was ashamed of me. Ashamed of me if He comes back for judgment. Are you a nominal Christian in the middle, neutral, with no intention of really getting involved? 2 Corinthians 11, 13 through 15. If one is that, for such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. What do you mean? Well, they look the part, they act the part, but they're not. And no wonder, for Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. <coughs> Satan, Satan could be sitting right here and he'd be the most precious, wonderful, sweet little. I can imagine him having a lot of white hair, more than I got, by the way, so I can't be him. And being handsome. That certainly ain't me either. But I can imagine him sitting here thinking, oh, how precious. No, Satan himself, you've got to be careful. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers, that's the ministers of Satan, also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness. Look the part, act the part. Talk the part, but not the truth. Whose end will be according to their works. Oh, they'll be judged, but not by me. God. <laughs> Revelation 3.16 So then, because you're lukewarm, Christ said, and neither hot or cold, he may be one of them. I mean, woo -hoo. I don't want to hear that about me either. You? Uh, Faith said that a few times now. He's going to tell you. Now, do you compare yourself to that person at all? Scared? How about class three? The class represented by the blind man himself. Well, if he was born blind, he's weak. He don't have any strength at all. He's certainly not going to be able to stand up against anybody. Really? He shared with others what Jesus had done for him. Verse 11 says, He answered and said, A man called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and said to me, Go to the pool of Siloam and wash. So I went. I washed. I received sight. He boldly affirmed that Jesus was a prophet in verse 17. Not in front of these Pharisees. They'll kick you out. 
I'll lose friends. I'll lose honor. I'll lose all this wonderful thing that they're giving me attention. I don't care. He's a prophet. He healed me, and I'm bold about it. Well, they asked the blind man again, uh, let me ask something. Ask you one more time. What do you say about uh, this guy because he opened your eyes? We want to hear it from you one more time. He said, he's a prophet. Now, the man I just described, the blind man, does he sound like, uh, uh, and you ask yourself, a true soldier of Christ that's taught in Ephesians 6? Yes. He put the whole armor on. And he's ready to go to war for God. He's ready. He don't back down. He does it out of love. He does it out of compassion. I'm sure this guy had tears in his little blind eyes now that he can see out of it. Heart beating hard. But boy, he was thrilled, full of thanksgiving and appreciation to Christ. He wasn't afraid of what his peers would think or do. He didn't care. Verse 30 through 33. The man answered and said to him, Why? Why? This is a marvelous thing that you do not know where he's from. Yeah, he has opened my eyes. What's wrong with you? Now we know that God does not hear sinners. We know that. But if anyone is a worshiper of God, he does his will, he hears him. That's in verse 31. And in verse 32, since the world began, it has been unheard of that anyone opened the eyes of one who was born blind. It's never happened. I'm the first. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. Look at me. I'm looking at you. I can see right in your eyes. Though he suffered the consequences of his conviction, verse 34, you think he cared? They answered and said to him, Well, you were completely born of sins, and then you think you can teach us? The Pharisees, we know it all. And they cast him out. I don't care. I don't want to be in, I don't want to be in your synagogue anyway. He also enjoyed the reward of his conviction. Enjoyed it? Oh yeah. Jesus said, For judgment I have come into this world between evil and good, that those who do not see may see. You see, you couldn't see and now you can. And that those who see may be blind. Now he's not talking actually about you were blind physically and now you see spiritually. You were blind spiritually and now you see spiritually. And those who see what they think is right, they may be blind. Then some of the Pharisees who were with him heard these words and they said to him, well, I guess you think we're blind too, right? Jesus said to them, if you were blind, you know, you would have no sin. But because uh, you say that you see, but you really don't believe, therefore your sin remains and you're like the blind man in faith and opinion, brothers and sisters, aren't you? Aren't you like the blind man? Ask yourself, and then answer yourself. I want you to answer it. Am I just like that blind man? I don't care how high the water gets, Mama. I'm a Christian. I'm going to live like it, act like it, think like it. I'm going to be one. I'm going to really be one. I'm going to be totally, honestly converted into Christ. I'm going to be baptized into Christ. I'm going to walk in Christ. I'm going to believe in His Word and I'm going to stand up for it. And I'm not going to back down. Why? Because I hate people? No, because I love people. Think about it. Are you? The conclusion. Evaluate your life and determine which character this story best portrays your life. If need be, accept Christ by obedience to the Gospel and live a committed life for Him. What is the Gospel? There's the plan of salvation with the verses. You have to hear this right here. The Gospel of Christ. Romans 10, 17. You have to hear what the book says. My faith cometh by hearing and hear what? The Word of God. And I have to believe with all my heart. In fact, let's talk about belief a minute. Without faith or belief, it is impossible to please God. You cannot please Him. I've been a good person. Well, you, know, you, you don't even believe in God. You don't, you don't believe in His Word. You don't, I don't care. I'm good. Nah. 
You got to repent of that. You got to change. You got to change your way of life, your way of thinking. And then you got to confess to the whole world. Like the eunuch did in Acts chapter 8 to Philip. I believe that Jesus Christ is a Son of God. And He'll wash away your sins. They will not be washed away if you read Acts 2.38. You repent and wash away your sins. And then, and then, not before then, you'll receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Galatians 3.27 How do I get into the church, the kingdom, the body of Christ? Well, the way you do that is you're baptized into it. It can't get more simple. Baptized into Christ. How do you know it's the church, the kingdom, and the body? Colossians chapter 1, verse 13 and 18 names all three off. It's so easy. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, if you have fallen short of what God wants you to be, then you need to make... Your wish is known to God that you want to repent. And if it's in a public way, you need to let us know so you don't bring reproach on the church that you have got your sins forgiven by God. That means you straighten your lives out. You can't repent without straightening it out. If you have a need, come together as we stand and sing. Will you come? Will you